A time history analysis can be used to analyze any dynamic event in autopipe on your piping model. Bentley offers training courses that I suggest taking if you're going to actually apply this to a piping model for a project. We have the modal analysis and dynamic introduction class, which is very important to take and understand before applying any dynamic loading. And we have time history analysis courses for the different types of dynamic loading that are fast acting, including hammer loading, slug flow, and relief valves. Time history analysis can also be used for slower dynamic loading like response spectra, but that type of analysis is very often performed using a response spectra. So that is how we teach earthquake analysis dynamically for autopipe. In our example here today, we're gonna to look at an example of a hammer. We have a valve at point C12 that is closing quickly, and we're gonna see how that affects the piping model as it goes through and learn just very quickly how to apply that in autopipe. We're assuming our modal analysis has been set up and reviewed correctly at this point. So we're just focusing on the time history loading and then running the time history analysis. So the first step for time history is to load in the file for your time history, which would be a profile file and a location file. Both of these are going to define your time history load. The profile is a forcing function and the location file tells the program where, when, and in what direction to apply that forcing function. When we're considering hammers, as in this example, we have a fluid transient utility that helps us to create these files. So we can input some quick specific data about our transient event and from that autopipe will create our forcing functions our time history profile files, and our time history location files. This shows the time history location file in a text format. If I review that further in the dialogues, I can look at the profiles. There will be a forcing function at the start point and every bend in between the start point and the end point of the transient event. The time history location file tells the program what forcing function to apply at what point, in what direction, and at what time. So those are now both created for us. The details of inputting into the fluid transient dialog, of the specifics about the time history profile file and the time history location file are all gone over in the training class. So I do suggest that you take a look at those training classes uh, depending on what types of loads you are considering in a time history analysis. Now that we have our profile and location files created, we can set up our time history analysis. From the analysis ribbon tab, we can select dynamic analysis and come to the time history tab. I'll create a new analysis set and I wanna load in my time history location file. If I have multiple time history location files that define a single transient event, I can include them in one analysis set. There's also some additional data that needs to be set up and options that need to be selected. And again, these are gone over in detail in the training course. So I'll leave the default and click OK to analyze the model. I am running the static modal and time history analyses and I'll click OK. It runs through and I'm now able to review the combinations that I can use to review my results. So I see that I've ran now this M1 load case, which represents my time history load case. For code combinations, I have an occasional case that includes sustain plus M1. And for non-code combinations, I have my time history load case that can now be combined further as necessary. 